Hello everyone, this is Callie Teagar and this is our SOC WOW team call. It is Monday, October 30th, uh, 2017. So big, big news on the SOC WOW team. We have a new executive, so please help me congratulate. And I was texting Steve, I'm like, are you going to announce it? I got our call. But please help me congratulate Melanie Breyers out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. Oh, I can't talk. I'm so excited. As the newest executive in Send Out Cards and on the SAC Wow team. So, woohoo! Way to go! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yay. you. Yay! <laughs> so awesome. So, Melanie, I know we've got, what, one day left in the October promotion. I know there's many people on the team and on this call going for promotions. If it's, you know, manager, senior manager, executive, and I know that each of them are super important. Um, so what advice do you, would you give people on where they're at? Because I know last week you, you still had a long ways to go. Yeah. We looked at last Monday. So What's your advice for the group on the call? What can you tell them? Um, I'm going to turn it over to you because now you're an executive. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm, I am very excited. Um, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was a lot of hard work, guys. It was a lot of hard work, but, um, but it's very doable. So no matter where your volume is today, I would say go and look in your back office so that you can see who your customers are and you know what team you have and start working with them um that's what i did i went to my team and i said who's in your pipeline who can i help you close um worked very closely with my team and then i also went to my customers and um did what you th i think a lot of you guys saw um, people on facebook doing saying if you're going to be using your um using your account to send holiday cards, could you go ahead and buy those points now? How can I help you um, do that? And so with some people, it was figuring out, yeah, you know, we do I want to, and this is, you know, how many we're going to send out. So this is how many points we're going to need. I had some people that said, you know, I, I, I'd like to help you, but I can't because, you know, I bank my points during the year to use it in, to use in the holidays and, you know, and that's okay too. We want, you know, um, we want people to do what's best for them, but it was, it was a lot of phone work. Um, a lot of, uh, it was literally, it was, I told Callie, it's the first time that it really hit home to me when people said you have to put blinders on and just completely focus on that because that's what it did. I had to clear my schedule. I had to just let things go that I wouldn't normally let go. Um, so yeah, uh, no. I'm going to stop you there because there's yes. two things that you had said to me. So one, I want to talk, like, what things did you let go? Because I think it's important to talk about the things that do get in the way. But when you go into a run like this, so like, what, what things did you let go? Um, if it wasn't, if it wasn't something, you know, f strictly for hitting this goal, I let it go. So uh, it was stuff like, uh, choosing not to maybe eat the best because I didn't have something in the house, but I wasn't going to leave. So it was like emptying out the pantry, just making rice and beans, just, <laughs> just to eat. It was, um, it was, I know on Friday I had a doctor's appointment that I probably should have gone to, but I'm like, that's going to be an hour and a half out of my day, you know, going and coming and being there. And I'm like, that can wait. So I rescheduled that. Um, what else did I do? Um, you didn't really care about the house being picked up. In the didn't process. care about the house. Be, I mean, literally, it was coming home from the grocery store one day. Um, I don't even know what day it was, but all those groceries were still sitting there. It's actually hit this on Friday. Um, and it was Friday evening, I think, by the time I hit it. And, um, and Saturday and Sunday, all those groceries were still sitting there because it was just like, it, it, that can wait. <laughs> so it was literally, if it, if it was not, for me hitting this goal, it got pushed, you know, to the bottom of the list. And it was, I was just so solely focused on calling team members, calling customers, closing business, uh, working with the team, um, doing Zoom meetings, doing meetings, doing calls, doing whatever I could to, to hit the goal. And then you talk to me because you talked about now I know what mass feels like. So you want to talk a little bit about yeah. 
that piece as well? Yeah. Um, what, uh, what a full calendar looks like, massive action. Um, gosh, if I were to pull up my calendar, it would probably be a, a good visual because, I mean, it was just stacked. Um, and going to uh, putting myself out there too, to even put, to meet new people, because I wanted to kind of stack the deck so that if stuff fell off, I was going to hit it anyway. Um, so I was going to new networking meetings, um, uh, still meeting new people, still filling the pipeline. And as a result of that, I have like seven pieces of businesses that are, you know, really hot pieces that are probably going to now come into my executive code because of that. Which is awesome, right? Because now, <laughs> now you've hit the 10,000 mark, but the big thing is you got, you want to maintain that 10,000 mark. So you put right. yourself in massive action, but it's not like you're going to stop now. I mean, we had that conversation as you were going for this and I'm like, do you have a plan once you get there? It's not just getting there, but then it's, you know, not even just maintaining, but continuing this growth path. Yeah. Yeah. And actually it was funny when I talked to Steve called me to congratulate me and he goes, okay, I want you to take a deep breath and you know what I'm getting ready to say. And I'm like, now my business starts. <laughs> um, and you know, and that's true, but this, the, the last two weeks, especially um, these past two weeks were just, when I say nonstop, I mean nonstop. That's now I truly know what, what uh, massive action looks like. It was, it was doing calls at doing zoom meetings at nine o'clock at night. It was, um, you know, I even said to my poor husband, he was like, when is this going to be over? And I'm like, it will be, I promise. You just said, when I promote, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. And as you know, if any of you guys know me from, from Facebook, you know, I, I love my baby, my fur babies and, you know, not taking them for walks, you know, just like, I feel like the worst mama right now, but, um, it, but it's all worth it. Cause you know, now I can take them to the dog park or take them for walks and stuff. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it was literally putting everything off that, that wasn't getting me to the goal. Everything, my world pretty much stopped these past two weeks, <laughs> except for getting to executive. Right. And I think there, you know, there's a good point. And I think you've seen, and I'm going to talk about these three stages, I think it's going to go into. So there's the stage where we think about our business, but we're not really into activity. And that's probably one of the worst places to do. There's the normal building of our business, the what I call the maintainable, the day in and day out. And then there's the massive action, massive sprint. Um, and so I think the big part of this, and I'll have talk, is like staying out of that first one. The first one is the one that kills us, right? Yeah. It's the one that completely stops momentum. You're thinking about it, but you're not doing anything. You're feeling the guilt, right? It's the worst place to be. The second one is the one you're about ready to go into and you've been in before, but it's that consistent effort at day in and day out where you're always doing something in your business. And then the third is this massive action that we say is for a season. You cannot keep massive action up forever. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about it because you, you want to have a life, but you know, knowing when, Hey, I'm going to run for it. And then it doesn't matter if the house is picked up the kitchen. You should have seen me when I was on the senior executive run. This place was a disaster. The only time it got cleaned up is when the cleaning lady was coming. And I was <laughs> yeah. Second week, and I'd have to get up early on Monday and get it picked up before she got here. So, do you want to talk about the seasons and the journey through those seasons? Because I know, you know, we've known each other for a long time. I, I am blessed that I've got to watch you and, you know, work with you through this journey. But what do you have to say about each of those? And what advice on, you know, those parts can you give to people? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I, um, I'm probably the best example of what not to do in building your business <laughs> because I, um, especially early on, not, not so much lately, but especially early on, I would, I would, I would do a little bit and then I'd quit and I'd do a little bit and I quit. And it was, you know, my, my business just did not grow because, you know, it's just like if you had a retail business, if you didn't show up for, you know, your retail business, you know, you'd go out of business or, business or if you didn't show up for your corporate job, you'd be fired. And so my, my business absolutely reflected that. Um, and then, you know, working with you, Cal, and getting some coaching and just um, um, 
figuring out, you know, what to do and what not to do and just how to be consistent and um, be accountable to myself and, and all of that, I kind of got into this, this, this more of a regular pattern. And that's, that is where you want to be, you know, con consistently doing something so that when opportunities like this October rank advancement, um, you know, that opportunity came up, then you're already set up that you've got enough kind of going on in your business that you can just go and hit it hard for that season. Um, and like you said, Cal, you, there's, you know, no way that that can be a sustainable for a long period of time, but, you know, knowing that it's a finite period of time that, um, you know, that you can go and hit it and hit it hard, um, you know, to reach your goal. And then you can kind of take it, you know, you not certainly don't stop, but you just, you can kind of, take a break and take a breath and kind of go into more of a maintenance mode and um, where you're not just absolutely, you know, killing yourself out there. But, but if you're in that kind of, you know, that consistent, um, that consistent mode where you're always doing something, then you're set up for success when the opportunities like this, you know, arise or, you know, for whatever your rank is now, whatever your next goal is, um, you know, once you kind of get within, you know, shooting distance of that, you know, then for you, that may be when you go into to massive action to go in and finish out that promotion. Um, so definitely being in that more consistent phase is, um, is where you want to be on a regular basis and not like I was in the beginning. So Mel, what do you think, you know, we've been in this for a little while. <laughs> What and you you have started and stopped. I, I can mm -hmm. say that as you mm -hmm. talked about. What do you think has kept you in the game in send out cards so long? Because so many people stop, like you have talked about, but never get started again. So what has kept you? What has kept you in the game? Like, I'm not. I don't want to lead you. So <laughs> I don't. No, I, I I know what the answer is. It's going to convention. It's going to events. It's staying plugged in because we don't have a boss over our shoulder saying, okay, this is what you need to be doing. And this is, you know, you need to be, you know, get to this event. So we have to rely on ourselves to stay plugged in, to stay in, you know, connected in the team calls and the, in the leadership calls and, you know, get to the PAs, get to the road tours, get to convention. Um, it, it's only because I have stayed plugged in with the company you know, I know that there have been times when I went to convention and I had absolutely zero going on in my, in my business, but I'd always leave there knowing, you know, okay, you know, it was just kind of like that kick in the pants that was like, okay, this is why you started this, you know, get, go out there and do something. And, um, and that's what's kept me in the game for seven years now. I was going to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have been to every single convention Yes, that has gone on even when you started. So you started, I think you started in January. That first convention was in um, September, early October. Yep. It was it was you, me, your sponsor Janice, and our yep. friend Donna, um, yep. and your husband Greg. He's my Greg. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there's some people on the line that says, and you weren't a manager. I believe if I remember correctly, you were not yet a manager mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. went to that very first. It took convention. me forever. That was back when it took 12 to get to, to manager. And it, it took me longer to get to manager and senior manager than it did for me to get to, from senior manager to executive. And now senior executive is going to be faster. <laughs> yes. We already have a plan. <laughs> So, um, but so some people are thinking, well, I'll go when I get to manager or I'll go when I get to senior manager, or I've heard, well, I've been to convention before. Why do I need to go to another one? So what would you say to that? Um, you, you're only hurting yourself by not going. Um, you're, you're hurting yourself and you're hurting, you're hurting your business by choosing not to go. Um, I have never regretted going to a convention and it's always um, my business has always reflected growth after going to convention now I may not have sustained it or in the earlier you know in the early days but um, it's it's you have to you have to stay plugged in you have to stay you know surround yourself with the people who have the same um, wants and goals that, that you have and um, 
I've always learned something, even, um, you know, even if it was hearing the same speakers or, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many times I've hear, I hear somebody speak, you know, just like when, when Steve comes and does road tours, I've heard him give his presentation for road tours. I don't know how many times I always hear something different. Um, so same thing with um, convention, you're always going to get something out of it. Um, there's never been a case where, where I haven't. And and they're just so much stinking fun. <laughs> we do have a lot of fun at this. Yes. So yes. Um, I, I want to say congratulations from the entire team. Congratulations. I know how much you wanted this. Um, I've been watching you along the way, and um, I am so excited. And I, I told you I needed good news the other day. Yes. So yes. congratulations. Thank um, you. Thank you. Yay. And <laughs> yeah, I knew she would say convention even when I asked that t um, question. And if you haven't gotten your convention tickets yet, you know, get that done. Do yourself that favor. If you are um, on in my organization, we do have discounted tickets. We can get you a code. If you are in someone else's organization, go to your upline, get the code. If you don't have an upline and you don't have a code, always reach out to me. We still have several um, tickets left, but we want you to be at convention because it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting as we talk about this, um, I titled this call tonight. I wasn't sure if Melanie was going to be able to speak on the call tonight yet if it had been announced. Um, but I talked about um, send out cards is bigger than me. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than any of us. Uh, and I'm going to get, um, hopefully I can get through this without being super emotional, but I really want to share some of the things that I realized. So most of you have probably, as you're on Facebook, realized that my mom died unexpectedly on Thursday morning. I will tell you, and many of you have probably have gotten that call, but you never want to get that call. Um, and when I got the call, I believe she was still alive. They were giving her CPR. And uh, Thursday, we actually had a road tour in Houston. And I was supposed to be going to pick up Steve Schultz and had to get one of my team members. Um, and I wasn't in a super rush to get there. But I did, I will tell you, when I got there, I, I learned she had died. And I did type, check the time of death just to make sure my, like, planning things hadn't, like... <laughs> <laughs> created me not to see her, but she pretty much died instantaneously. And that's what my mother would have wanted. Um, so a couple things there, there is a family of heart disease, there's a history. So I will be getting checked. If you guys have family issues, go get them checked, please. I don't know why she didn't. Um, she had it, my, her dad had it, his dad had it. So just learning about all that, maybe she didn't think it was going to happen to her. We really thought my mom was going to live into her eighties and nineties and she was 70. But as I reflect, um, over the past few days and having lost, um, two parents within less than two and a half years, right? I never thought I laugh. I, I saw Steve Schultz, um, on Thursday, I ended up seeing him and I laughed and I said, people say the 40s are supposed to be the best years of your life. What the heck, <laughs> right? I was 40 when my dad died, 43 when my mom died. I went through a divorce. I'm like, what is going on here? And I, w I was told um, that your struggles are also what make you in this life, right? That the things we go through um, also make us strong, it makes us inspire others, it makes us who we are, and, and to know that, and so I'm trying to hold on to that, and I know you guys, I've been on Facebook, know that I'm taking time, but for me, I'm probably still in shock, um, but one of the things that I realized was, I, I did go to the road tour Thursday night. Um, my sister needed some alone time. It was just her and me. And I could have either sat home, ate a pan of brownies and drank two bottles of wine or went and surrounded myself with some send out cards love. And I decided I wanted to be with my send out cards family. And that was really important to me because the send out cards company, the move, it, it inspires me, right? We, we exist because Cody lost his brother and didn't act on a prompting. And so I've tried to live my life over the last few years through those promptings. Um, and it was funny, I was talking to one of my mom's friends on 
Saturday. Um, the outpouring has been amazing. And she and so they were two friends from Indiana named Beth and Sue, and they were coming down to see my mom in about a week and a half or two weeks, and they hadn't seen her in years. And she told me that she had, she's like, I had this feeling, and so did Beth, that we should call your mom on Wednesday night, but neither of us did because we just didn't know what to say. And I, you guys, that hit me. Like, that's a prompting. I was like, wow. So listen to those promptings, right? You're in this company for a reason. And if the only reason you're in this company is to start listening to your inner voice and following those promptings, do it, right? I had a prompting. My mom last year on her anniversary had called me up. It was a Wednesday night. She called me like midday and said, can you go to dinner tonight? And I didn't have anyone to take over the business presentation. It was her anniversary. So I made a vow that she would never have to spend my dad's birthday or a wedding anniversary alone again. And so we invited her over um, last Monday night after I had the team call. She was actually here while we were doing it. And my oldest sister and I got to see her. She spent the night um, Tuesday morning when she left. I had no idea that would be the last time I would ever see her. And then Wednesday, my middle sister saw her. She stopped by her office. So all three of us girls saw my mom that very last week. And uh, but it was the prompting that said to invite her. And it was strong, right? So follow those strong promptings. You never know where they're going to lead. But I really do believe, you know, I've heard Cody say it for years. And at first I was like, yeah, but it's your gut, right? Your gut knows you have this subconscious and I don't know how it works or why it works, but it works. So follow it. If you feel like you need to reach out to someone or send them a card, do it. Um, second, right, we have an amazing product to reach out in kindness to people. I went back and saw, I was actually kind of disappointed, I only sent my mom a few cards this year, but if I looked back from 2009, all the cards I've sent to my parents, it was amazing. I would have never sent them this many cards or the people in my life. And we have a beautiful tool for people to reach out to others. We help people heal relationships, right? So this is not something to keep to ourselves. This is something we should truly be sharing with the world because no other product in network marketing is like send out cards. Nothing. Um, nothing is like this product. And so, you know, we, we teach the heartfelt car today because it is life is about the relationships and the relationships you build. And if I've learned anything through this, I mean, the outpouring, I can't keep up. I, I, I think I told Melanie or someone the other day that I'm absolutely overwhelmed, but in a good way. Um, and if, if you've reached out to me and I haven't responded yet, don't be offended. I just, I can't keep up. I had um, 60 text messages Friday night that I started responding to. I still have like 50 Facebook messages. I think um, 600 people have responded have commented on my uh, post that I did on my mom the other day. I haven't even been able to stop. Um, part of that is just because it's going to kill me when I go read them all. And I, and I've got to be ready for it. Um, so that is, so reach out to kindness, build your relationships and then build this business, right? I love what Melanie talking about. I really wanted to talk about those different phases, right? Get out of that phase of doing nothing. Do something in your business every day, you guys, right? And build this business. And then when you have time for massive action, do it. Like I am so glad I took massive action and um, back in July and made senior executive because if I was trying to do it right now, Right. There was, and I will remember the day um, Jay and I sat down and I said, are we going for it today? And I'm like, let's do it. Let's just go for it. Um, because if I didn't, I would be doing it right now. And I might not have gotten to spend the time over the last month with my mom that I did it. Right. And that's huge. And I look at this business and what it's done. And I have always been the girl that wasn't right. I had a really I didn't have a great blueprint, if you use Cody's word, on network marketing. And um, I will tell you that's completely changed today because of this business and being in network marketing. I have got to spend so much time with my mom over the last two years, not knowing, right? We didn't know this was going to happen. Again, we thought she was going to live into her 80s or 90s. <clears throat> and because I didn't have a boss, 
because I didn't have to go to a traditional job, because I got to choose how, when, and where I work and play, I spent hours upon hours upon hours with my mom. Time that was really well spent that if I hadn't, I would have never gotten back because she's gone, right? I still don't believe it when I say that, but she's gone. And the moments we had, the conversations we had, the glasses of wine, we went to Cuba, right? And I've been looking at the pictures because we didn't post many from there because there was no Wi-Fi and for me to do things afterwards and the laugh and the videos. Um, I flew last year from an event to her surprise party, right? At all the things I got to do and time I got to spend, I truly believe I would not have gotten to do if I wasn't in network marketing. And I wouldn't have gotten to do if I hadn't spent the time building my business when I could. And my dad passed away two years ago and what, three months? And I also was at the um, ability I had, you know, let's see, I turned 40, I filed for divorce 11 days later. And that next year, I spent a ton of time at my parents. And before I turned 41, my dad died. And I spent almost every weekend at my parents. And I got to do this again, because I'm in network marketing, I would not have been able to do what I did. And when my when my dad died, I spent a whole week and did absolutely nothing at my mom's house with her right? I was there for my parents. And we never know how much time we have left. We never know what's going on in life. So I tell you guys, go build your business now. Do it now. Find that time every day. And if you're working full time, carve out that hour, that 90 minutes, because one, you either need this or two, someone you're going to talk to is going to need this and come back and thank you that you introduced them to this business because you literally changed their life because they got to spend time they wouldn't have. And I have an older sister and she makes a crap load of money. Yes, I'm not supposed to say crap. I know. But she makes a boatload of money and she has her own business, but she does not have her freedom. She is a tax business and April 15th, September 15th and October 15th are horrible dates for her to the point where she said, Callie, I've got to get down to where I'm only working 30 hours a week. Otherwise my business is going to kill me. Yes. I make tons of money. Um, she does really, really well, but she doesn't have her freedom and she does outside of those seasons, but those seasons, right? She works all the time all the time. We didn't go to Cuba. My mom's birthday was in March. We didn't go to Cuba until April because Trisha couldn't go because of tax season, right? We are so blessed in this business. And yes, we have to give up some things as we build. I gave up going to my parents' 50th anniversary party. And I will tell you, I don't regret it because it was convention. It was very important for me to be there, but I was there so many other times when other people couldn't be. Right. So you have to pick and choose. The other thing that I am going to stress is that when you, we, are, we live on these phones. I am guilty of this. My ex-husband used to throw a fit about me being on my phone. I knew Melanie would laugh at that. Um, but yeah, but I think that's a whole nother story. I digress. But when you're with people, get off your phones right? It's not, I don't believe it's about quantity always. I believe it's about quality, right? Instead of just saying, let's hang out, let's watch TV all night, right? Go work your business for an hour and then say, you know what, honey, from eight to 9 PM, I am 100% yours with no distractions, right? Set those boundaries with your family, with your life. And then when you're with the people you're with, be with them, right? Be with them because that's what matters most, right? Melanie, I don't know if Greg's in town, but go spend an hour and just be with him tonight, right? And tell him I said that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I will say this, Cal. He, um, we, we had a trip to urgent care today and he just told me last night, yeah, you don't even know this. Um, he told me last night, he said, you have got to go and just kill this thing because I can't work like this for the rest of my life. And uh, you talking about being a why, you know, got to get my husband out of that. Yeah. So go find your why, you guys. If anything, remember this because life is short. Um, you never know. And then last, my, my, what I'm going to really, my tribute to my mom is the thing that has blown me away. 
is all the people that have come to us and said, um, I want, no, your mom, I'm so glad I was your mom's best friend. And it's amazing, right? Multiple people, her friend Liz, her friend Demaris, her friend Jan, like I did so many, my knee or my niece, even me, I felt like my mom was my best friend, right? She had this gift of making people feel so important when she was with them. She was an amazing. Um, some of you on this call have met her. Some of you haven't. But she would used to tell me, she's like, Kelly, I'll sit on airplanes, and these people I've never met will tell me their story, will tell me their life story. I don't know why they do it. They just do it. And sometimes it was exhausting for her, but she, but she didn't say anything, and she just let them tell her story. She was that kind of woman, and that's the woman I want to be. Right, that everyone says, um, yeah, she was my best friend, right? She just had this gift. And I was talking to Cody today because his mom had that gift of all the kids thought they were their favorite and all my mom's friends thought they were their favorite. So, you know, be with the people, make them important because really in the end, life is all about the relationships, right? It's all about the relationships, those that we nurture. And um, if you go do that in this business, if you go nurture strong relationships, if you um, be there for people, your business will take care of itself. Now, you do have to work it. But my mom was not a network marketer. She didn't understand it. But if she'd ever decided it, she would have been the bomb. So with that, because, yep, she would have been the bomb. So with that, know that I'm okay. I probably won't be, but right now I am. But that goes from minute to minute, hour to hour. Um, but I love you all. I want to thank you guys for showing up, for being here, for doing what it takes. Know that we all have bad days in this business, but we all have great days. And that every moment when you're ready to throw in the towel and don't think it's worth it, it is right? It is. You, you're either changing your life or you're changing someone else's life, right? And that can be through our product or through our opportunity because they both make a huge impact. So don't hold this. When I say this is bigger than us, it is. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than me because there's someone out there that's looking for an amazing product or looking for an amazing opportunity because in a year, five years, 10 years from now, they may be going through something like I am or something like you guys. We don't know what everyone's going through on this call. I saw a post the other day that we never know what someone's journey is. And I believe that when I'm going to close with this, I know I'm over time, but I don't care tonight. Um, <laughs> but I once um, I read, and I think it is, is that sometimes, right. And this is the compassion piece is that sometimes you might see someone in an airport and they're like rude or they're angry or, but you don't know what just happened in their life. They may be getting on that plane to go to a funeral or getting on a plane because they just lost their spouse, their mom, their dad. So love people, right? Love them for where they're at. I, um, I know this is going to hit me later. Um, if any of you were on the journey with my dad, my dad passed away August 3rd. Melanie can tell you this. Convention was a month later. It didn't hit me for a month. And for those of you that saw me at that convention, thank you for still loving me because it wasn't pretty. It was pretty ugly. I was in tears almost the whole time. So just love people for where they're at because we never know what they're going through, right? Love your prospects. Love your clients. Love your team. Um, love others. And stay in touch and build those relationships because... You never know when, when they need you, when they need our product, or when they need our opportunity, because we truly are changing lives. And you, each of you, every one of you are doing that every day. So I love you. Thank you for being on. Good we night. Love you too, Callie. Thank you. And congratulations, Melanie. I am so super proud of you. Night, everyone. Bye.